Hey everyone, this is Lyndon here, and I'm just shaking with excitement for another Action VFX tutorial. Today we're going to be going over something really useful to translate into so many of your other projects. Uh, we're going to be going over camera shake and camera movement in general with Adobe After Effects. So I'd love to keep talking about how useful this is going to be, how, how awesome it is, and all the skills we're going to learn, but I know your time is important. So let's go ahead and get things shaking. Like, I don't want to rattle on too long. Oh, well, so we appeared in a new environment. Cool. So we're here in Adobe After Effects. Let's go ahead and check out a before and after with shake versus no shake. Whoa, so there's so many advantages to camera shake. And I'm just going to say this. One of the advantages is that if your special effects is a little bit fake, like if there's a few fake, unrealistic details, that camera shake would just blend everything together. You won't be able to notice all those details and it'll really do a lot to the realism because people can't notice that those unrealistic details and the camera shaking around so that's like a super plus like for for the camera shake so anyway let's go ahead and start adding camera shake to this scene now basically the essence of camera shake is just animating the position like this we're going to add camera shake like that so we can either animate this position parameter here or we can do it another way which is a way I prefer is doing it with an adjustment layer. I like to do effects with adjustment layers as much as possible. Uh, adjustment layers are more organized, they're easier to work with, you have more controls like you can just easily turn it on and off, you can add masks to adjustment layers. So I really like to do my effects and adjustment layers as much as possible like keying whatever. So we're going to go ahead and call this camera shake. And to do camera shake with an adjustment layer we have to go over here to the effects and presets and type in transform and uh, just drag that transform effect on the camera shake. The transform, you can either go to the transform settings here, like transform, or there's actually a transform effect that you can apply either directly to the layer or to adjustment layers. So to animate this position value here, to add that camera shake, we have to do this with an expression. We can't do it with keyframe, that's too, uh, that's really difficult, it's tedious, and it's just not the smart way to go. So we need to do this with expressions. So to add expression to any parameter, any value, you just hold alternate and click the stopwatch. So that's just going to open this text box here where we can type in different, different expressions. And expressions are amazing. They open up so many new possibilities and controls. I hope you're not afraid of expressions. They're very simple. And today we're going to memorize this really short expression. It's called wiggle. It's just a really short expression, wiggle. It's going to wiggle the position values. And there's two parameters in this wiggle um, expression. So we have to put parentheses. So wiggle parentheses. And we're going to put two values in, the, in these parentheses. And we separate those values with a comma. So wiggle parentheses. And so the first parameter is the frequency. This is how fast it's going to wiggle. And so a good value for camera shake is 11. So basically that roughly means 11 times per second. It's a little more complicated than that, but basically 11 times per second. And so we're going to do another value, which is the amplitude. We've got to separate these two values with a comma. So frequency, comma, amplitude. Two Fs. Frequency first. And for now we're just going to put 50 in the amplitude. So for this whole composition, it's going to shake it 50 units or 50 pixels, because position, um, 11 times per second. So watch this. It's like an earthquake. Cool, so I hope you're thinking about all the possibilities for how you can now use this expression. For instance, if you have a stationary tripod scene, you can use this wiggle expression just to wiggle the, the footage around a little bit, Look, give it like some camera movement. But you wouldn't want to do it this fast, you would want to turn down the frequency so that it wiggles a lot slower. So be thinking about all the possibilities for how you can use these techniques. So we want to animate this wiggle expression right here, we don't want any. Uh, wiggle and then when it hits the ground we want a lot of wiggle and so we need to animate the amplitude of this wiggle expression that's a, there's a problem how do you animate this value right here well I'm gonna show you this is gonna be groundbreaking you're gonna love it we're gonna learn how to animate values within expressions this is so awesome so to do this what you do is type in a slider controller in the effects and presets and drag this on the adjustment layer and basically this does nothing. It's like a lifeguard at Olympic swimming. It doesn't, doesn't, yeah, it's so helpful, isn't it? Like, what is this doing? But basically this just holds a number. But the thing is we're able to animate this value. So if we can attach this number to this value here in the expression, we can now animate the expression. So to do this, we just select the value here and grab the pick whip and choose this parameter. So boom, that creates an expression where it links this value within the wiggle expression to this slider controller value. Now when we animate this slider, it's also going to animate the wiggle expression. Boom! How amazing that is that? 
groundbreaking. So let's go ahead and do our animation. So like right here we want there to be zero amplitude in this wiggle expression. So let's just type in zero here, click the stopwatch, add a keyframe, go forward a little bit. Right here we want there to be like a lot. So right when the explosion comes in, it's like a lot of shake. So we're gonna do like 80. Like that's a lot of shake. So boom, boom, yeah. And as it as things settle down a little bit, the energy dies out, it spreads out. We're gonna turn this value back to zero. So we're we're animating the amplitude of this wiggle expression. Frequency, frequency first, and then amplitude. And then we want it to die out pretty quick, but then we just want a little bit of shake as you know the things hit the ground, you know, there's still an explosion. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the graph editor. And then we need to open our keyframes. So if you hit U, it's just going to open all your keyframes. And that's a really super, super useful technique. U opens keyframe parameters. And by the way, if you hit EE, E twice, EE, it's going to open your parameters with expressions. So we're going to hit U, opens the parameters with keyframes. Let's just go about here. And we want the shake to die down a little bit. Let's just bring it down so that there's an initial shock at the beginning. And then it kind of dies down. There's a little bit of shake. So that's really cool. And we can also click these buttons down here. So we can do an easy ease or hit F9 for a shortcut. You can also hit this one right here to kind of smooth it out. So there we go. And the graph editor is really helpful. You can smooth, you can watch your values, make sure they're smooth. You can visualize things. The graph editor is super helpful. So if you didn't know that, I hope this tutorial is worth your time because that's like super useful. All right, let's check out a preview. Awesome, I love it. It just adds so much more energy to the impact. So many awesome things about camera shake. Now, there is an obvious problem. The obvious problem is these black edges. Uh, when, the, when the edges of the footage come into the frame, that is a serious problem. Now, there are several ways to get rid of this, and th these are gonna be really cool techniques. I guarantee they'll translate to other projects. These will be lifelong skills. So stay tuned, be, stay energetic, learn, absorb as much information as possible. But it'll be worth it, because we're gonna have previews and you're going to work, and then you're going to receive the fruits of your work, and that's what life's about, right? So this is awesome. So what we're going to type in, this is the first way to get rid of this problem here around the edges. We're going to type in an effect called Motion Tile. And check this out. We're going to drag this before the transform effect. That's important. Put it before the transform effect. And so what we can do is turn up the output width and height. So let's do like 120. 120 is a good value. So 120. So that's, it goes by percent. So it's 120%. So it extends, it repeats the footage out by 120%. So you can see if we move it actually out too far, then boom, we see the edges. So if we, 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 we could make this value more like this. But there's still a problem here. I mean, this is better than black, but it's still a noticeable edge. It's still a problem. But what we can do, something really cool, is go over here and check mirror edges. And that's gonna make it a mirror rather than bringing this part over here. It's gonna flip it, make it like a mirror. So just so you can see more clearly, check this out. Super cool, love it. Even though it's not perfect, we can't really see those edges that come into the frame. So that is a really cool technique, but sometimes it's not perfect because when we have these sharp angled objects, you can really notice that mirroring effect. So sometimes it's not perfect. So let's talk about the second way of getting rid of these edges, um, which also has advantages. This method has advantages and the other one also has its advantages. So let's turn off the motion tile and basically the second method is just scaling up your footage. So let's just turn this up, turn the scale up a little bit and we can just hide those edges. So the disadvantage is you scale it up a little bit, you lose a little bit of the footage information around the edges, and when you scale it up, it makes your footage a little bit worse quality. So there are disadvantages, but, but the advantage is there's no mirroring effects around the edges. And sometimes you can even animate this if you don't want your whole scene to be scaled up. So we can go back, kind of animate this down to 100. So let's check out a preview, see how that looks. Wow, cool. So the scaling me method works really nice too. So the last thing we want to talk about is motion blur. You really want to add motion blur to your camera shake and to do this, you just have to enable motion blur for the comp and turn on motion blur for that camera shake adjustment layer. That's automatically going to add realistic motion blur because if the camera is really moving, it's really going to have motion blur. It blends everything together, makes it look more realistic. Motion blur is really important. And by the way, let me show you guys another cool After Effects trick. What you can do to speed up your workflow is just grab all these three effects, open up your effects and presets, and drag it in here. And you can save it as a preset. 
So we can call this camera shake. And basically what this is going to do is create a preset with all these effects together. So next time you need to add camera shake, just find camera shake preset right here. Boom, apply it to your footage. And that's going to add that camera shake effect. And all you have to do is animate the amplitude here. And you can also make another slider for the frequency with the same exact techniques we learned. We can make a, you can make a slider for the frequency of the wiggle. But anyway, that was a really cool technique. Just made a preset called camera shake. So this tutorial has gone on for a little while. It's like 10 minutes. But about time, you can create this effect within one minute. It doesn't take long at all. We just cover so much information, so many details. But this, this, this effect really does not take long to create at all. But it still really can help to create a preset just to make things even faster. So guys, I've really enjoyed it. I've had so much fun. I hope your skill set inventory is stronger and healthier. My name is Lyndon Bracewell for Action VFX. And until next time, I'll leave you to it.